Hello everyone, this is David Arroyo and today I would like to discuss the release of Clip Studio Paint on iOS, that means iPad Pro with the Apple Pencil. Um, this is a very welcome release. Um, you know, uh, those that follow me on my channel will know that I do use Clip Studio Paint already, uh, but that would be on the desktop. And I was very excited to test it out and see that, you know, how does it translate to the iPad Pro? Is it something that can really be used on the iPad Pro? Can I use it professionally? Uh, will it be able to replace some of the other apps that I'm currently using? So uh, let's dive straight in and let's have a look and see how, uh, how it competes. Okay, so the way that I'm going to be doing this is a little bit gorilla style, okay? I do not have the tools to be holding uh, my camera mid-air and all that stuff, so, and, you know, I don't have a buddy right now at home here to help me um, with the camera, so I'm just doing this by myself, so I'm sorry if it's a bit shaky and the sound ain't too good, but hey, at least you guys get a very quick look at um, what Clip Studio Paint is. So, okay, I'm gonna open it up. Okay, now the very first uh, thing I wanna mention is that Clip Studio Paint on the iPad Pro is pretty much a copy of the desktop version, which you can see right here. Okay, uh, some of the menus are a tiny little bit different, but uh, all the stuff that you have on the desktop, you know, you'll find back here, your file, your animation, your layers, and I'll try to show you all of that. So when you go to file, you know, you have all the stuff that you would find in a, um, you know, in the desktop version. And mind you, this is not connected to the desktop. This is not using AstroPad. So this is just a standalone Clip Studio Paint app that is, you know, you can download it uh, on the Apple website right now. Uh, but we'll get to that later. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a brand new file. Now, again, for those of you that know Clip Studio Paint, you will see that all the stuff is there. Okay, so you give it your name, you can do your dimensions, your setups, if you, you know, what type of uh, page size you want, and so forth. I'm going to just cruise through this, okay? So I'm only going to focus on the comics. Obviously, you have stuff for illustration as well, and, you know, for, for print and all that type of stuff. It, 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 all the stuff, basically, that's in the um, desktop version. And then I'm talking about the um, Clip Studio Paint X, okay? So that's important. So here, if you look at the desktop version here as well, I have Clip Studio Paint X. So it's like the the, the upgraded uh, version or the the like the pro version, if you will. Or actually, that's funny because they call the pro version the standard one. So X stands for extreme, I think. Uh, anyways, so let's very quickly go through this. Let's just make the file. Um, if you didn't pay attention, uh, wait. Actually, let me show that again because that's quite important. So new. DPI, okay, DPI is important for everyone. So at colors, uh, if you set it up as colors, you know, you can go for 350 to 600. You set it up as monochrome, you know, it can go up to 1,200 and 600 minimum. Um, so, you know, we're gonna work with 350 just for the demo. Um, I'm gonna open it up very quickly. Now, I'm gonna cruise through everything, okay? So, because there's quite some features that I want to make sure that are there. So for me, the most important thing was just to verify like, okay, are the main features in there that I need? If so, then cool, then we can keep uh, going. So the very first thing I want to do is check this one, which is the panels. So for that, I'm gonna open this up in a second. So here we go. You can do your standard stuff here, but what I really want to do uh, is already create a, a setup like, um, like a, uh, what do you call it? Um, one that's straight from the library. So what I did really quickly, I went to material, okay? And just anything, when you click anything really, you just click here and then you've got your material uh, stuff here. So I went to manga material and these are your templates that you can set up really quickly. So I'm gonna use just any random one. We're gonna use this one. I'm just gonna drag and drop it as you can see. You can just drag and drop it into the file. There you go. It works. Okay, then after that, um, when you go to your layers, you will see that it has already created all your layers. So again, this is not a tutorial, okay guys? So for those of you that don't know Clip Studio Paint, I'm sorry, I do have six videos on how to do all this. 
uh, it's already on my channel and I'll provide you with a link obviously but um, here is just to show you that on the iPad Pro uh, you know the features are there and that's very important for me to just show right now so I'm quickly gonna find uh, the very first frame there you go so this one for those of you that already know how this works when you go to your library uh, you can also enter uh, 3D body types, which for me is interesting. Um, so I'm going to put in a male, for example, you dra drag and drop it in, and it stays within that uh, frame like it does. You use your two fingers, as you've just seen now, you can use one to move around. And in order to do it with only one finger, you need to set this up to use different tools. Sorry, I clicked it by accident you have to click on use different tools with fingers and pen okay then you with one finger then you can move around and if you hold the finger uh, you can select colors and stuff like that right so really quickly moving on um changing your character well you know again like i said i'm going to do it super fast today so i'm just going to try to quickly change it like this so that's the angle the camera angle that i want and then uh, i'm going to you know, so I've selected the, the zoom feature. Uh, let's zoom out, say about there. Now we're going to give it a quick pose. So the entire body, uh, let's see what pose, just any pose really here, a fighter pose. So to add the pose, you just drag and drop it, boom. You know, you've got your pose there. If you want to move the camera again, as usual, it's very simple. You just select that one over there um, and just line it up. Okay, so this, all this stuff that you have in Clip Studio Paint, you have it here as well. And the cool thing is, um, actually, yeah, let me just show you that straight away off the bat. So let's say I want to add more characters to the scene, okay, to this particular panel. Move the camera a little bit. Uh, oops. Oh, yeah, undo, two fingers, and it undo, uh, undoes everything. Two fingers on the screen basically is Command Z or Control Z depending on whether you use a Mac or a PC. Right, so really quickly there. I want to import another body. Uh, let's do a female this time. And it's as simple as just drag and dropping. And she's going to be in your scene um, right there. And she's already touching the floor. Everything that you want, she's already doing. So that's really cool. Uh, now I can just select her and I want her to rotate. And here I'm literally just using the same things I would have used in in the desktop uh, version and that is the really fun part here so here uh i don't know maybe let's make her or let's choose another one i don't know what she's doing a left straight or something okay and well, now we have to rotate her again a little bit yeah, maybe like this here again if now you want a, a better view for for the camera because you're like ah, it's not really what i'm looking for oops undo again that's the cool part just two fingers it un uh, does undo for everything select the camera this might be a bit more difficult for me to do right now because i'm holding one hand the phone and but yeah as you can see you know you can just position your characters more or less the way you want them position the camera you know put them more or less within the frame and start zooming in to the level that you want so let's say you wanted to frame it like this and again this is very quick it's just to prove a point today okay so once you got that done uh you go back to your layers okay so this is your reference layer that you can use now for drawing over it okay you can also lower the opacity um you know so once that's done create a new layer uh, you'll see so the opacity is done and this you can consider it as if let's say you want to do your pencils over it okay so you start zooming in and here i'm going to try my best to do this while i you know, I just selected any random uh, pencil here, okay, and the brush size, also your, your pencil brush sizes, that's all here. Okay, so you can go here and you can do your pencils that you want, your, your sizes are there, you know, it, basically everything you need. So that's really cool, uh, nothing has changed in that sense. Okay, and drawing on here feels very natural. Okay, so that's very cool. Again, I'm going over this really badly right now. Just to quickly show you that it can be done. Um, you know, just do something like this, blah, blah, blah. Give, you know, something like that. And then there you go, some gloves, blah, 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 blah. Normally you would do this a whole lot better, obviously. But I'm just showing you really quickly that, 
you know, you can use this as a pose. Uh, let's put some belt on. This was a guy, right? Yeah, I'll put a belt on him. Uh, I don't know, if there's some shorts or something. There you go. And then you could do the leg and, you know. So there you go. Some shoes. There you go. There you go. If you want to see this a little bit more professional, again, you can go to my uh, tutorials that I have on my channel, which is all in Clip Studio Paint and explains this in very, like, you know, in all details that you want. So no problem. Again, the link uh, will be added um, to this video. Right, so your pencils, you can do it there. Another thing that is interesting about this, but for that, you have to put it all the way to the top. So your opacity has to be at 100. You can do this cool effect, which is this one. So make sure that your select that your 3D layer is selected, and then you do this one. And what that will do, let me remove the pencils, is that it will show you the current lighting, okay, that you've set up. So in your 3D uh, setup, you can change your lighting. Um, to do that, no, not material. Um, sub tool detail, right there we go. And then we go to light source. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to find it a bit faster here because on the desktop, I have my shortcut keys for that. Uh, and here I kind of have to show you like this. So I'm um, trying to keep this steady with one hand. Okay, so features such as effects are not shown in fast view, so in real time, basically. So here you won't be able to see that uh, black and white view. So light source, right? So when I move this, okay, the light source changes, as you can see, okay, and then when I remove it and I go back to my normal view and what whatever not, um, see, the light has changed here as well. So it's a very fun feature uh, that you can use on, on your layers and stuff. Okay, but for that you always have to keep the opacity at 100, so that's important. If you lower the opacity here, um, not much is going to happen really. Once you change it, it's just going to disappear. Okay, so that's important. Right, uh, so that you can do. Your 3D assets and whatever not, they're, they're there. Um, then when you go over it, oh yeah, if you want to, that's another important thing. Keep your finger, uh, your, your, your pen uh, over the layer. And then obviously if you're happy with it, you know you're not going to change it, just rasterize it. Um, so when you click on this, Normally you should do it. There you go. And now you can change the opacity. Okay, and then you can go back to your um, your pencils and, you know, you already know what your lighting is going to be like. So your pencils are there. The same applies for your ink. So once you got that done, only the pencils are left. And then you create another layer. And then you do your inking over it. Okay, and the ink the same. I'm not going to go into all the details about how, how the inking is done. Just gonna lower this, and then let's say you want to get a little bit more, you know, you want to do your things a little bit prettier. Uh, I'm just using the G Pen right now, so it's very very basic. Um, let's see if I can. I haven't set up any of the of the things, but it feels identical to on the desktop. Okay, so that's also another very cool feature. Um, and here you can just you know. It all perfectly works. Okay, so that's that. Another thing that was very important for me for things to work, um, perspective guides. Okay, so let's say we go to the next frame. Uh, this one right here, perspective guides. Uh, where was this again? Layer, ruler frame, create perspective ruler. Okay, and here you can choose the type of uh, perspective rulers you want. You say two point perspective, okay. It's in there. It's within, or you can put it within your frame. So just drag and, oops, drag and drop it into your frame so that it stays literally within the frame and it doesn't affect any other uh, layers under it. Go to your perspective guide. With this selected, that's important, you can start, um, you know, modifying your perspective guide basically. And then you can change the horizon line to wherever you want. Put it there, for example, here on this side, on that side. Um, just like in Clip Studio Paint uh, on the desktop, so it's identically the same. Make a new layer then, and you want to do all your um, lines. Look, all of them now follow perfectly the perspective guide as instructed. And this is really cool because you can do that for every panel that you have. 
Whereas, for example, in something like Procreate, you can only do this perspective line once, uh, you know, this, this, this perspective grid. Uh, here you can have several ones. If you no longer want your lines to follow it, just make sure you click this one, and then all of a sudden you can draw loosely again. <clears throat> Two fingers, undo. And another way of just drawing loose is even if you have this selected, if you remove the uh, perspective ruler from sight, all of a sudden you can draw everything you want. So that's also very important. Um, and these for me, in a nutshell, are really the most important things that I can quickly create my frames, that I can quickly create my uh, thingies. Oh, one last thing, obviously, text balloons. So if I really quickly wanted to do a text balloon, and again, like I said, I'm not creating art today. <laughs> I'm just very quickly showing that you can use this as an actual professional tool. Okay, so when you want to type a text, you just type your text. So for example, this is a test. There we go. With that done, you can move it. About, oops, you have to make sure that you select the right tool. Move it about, and then let's make a very quick balloon around it. Um, the eclipse balloon, there you go, something like that. Don't forget, by selecting this, you can select the individual um, you know, items. And by doing this, then again, you go back into your text balloons, and then you do a, uh, a thought ball or balloon tail, for example. And my settings for that were that it was a spline, so meaning that I can do something like this and then follow it up. And there you go. As soon as I do that, then it's part of it. And there you go. All this you can use as an, you know, you can move the text balloon as, as you want. Uh, you know, the text will follow, obviously. Uh, and obviously within the thing is you can change things, um, you know, all that stuff here by, by doing just stuff like this. Say you don't like it, you know, as usual. Um, two fingers, two finger tap, and everything goes back to normal. So that's it. In in a nutshell, okay, I've basically shown you that the features that you want, colors are obviously gonna work. I mean, that's, that's pretty standard. Uh, for your colors, it's literally just here. You create a new layer, choose a color that you like, and you go to your, your um, you go to your color wheel, you go, you select your brush, you select a brush, and then from there, you know, on obviously a layer that works. Let's make it under this one. And if I want to start coloring colors, you know, your, your selection tools and stuff that works. Um, so there you go. In a nutshell, really quickly, all that stuff is there. So I just wanted to show you guys that the features that you really need are there. So let's let's have a quick look at my conclusions on this all right so um that was a very quick very like you know nothing too fancy type of demo just information um all i wanted to show is that the features uh that are in clip studio paint the desktop version are on the ipad pro version as well so it, it is a copy but now i'm going to talk a little bit about uh the, the other like the details that make the difference so first of all the filing system filing system is done on clip studio paint itself they have this cloud based system and you upload to a system that you know they it's like storage i think you get about 10 gigabytes and that's where you upload your work onto. Now from there you can export it into Dropbox and files uh, on, on Apple, uh, but not directly. So when you do a save file, it, it automatically saves it to that cloud uh, system. So it's not gonna go uh, into your Dropbox or anything. You have to do that afterwards. Um, so that means to me that if you're trying to work a little bit on the iPad Pro and then going back home and doing it on, on the desktop, I'm not sure how that works yet. I haven't had the time to uh, verify that. I assume that they have something in place, like to do some work outside of home and some at home. The other thing uh, that is really useful is uh, having a keyboard. So as you've noticed, I had to constantly click the tools and find them. And you know, I, I don't know if you've noticed, but I felt a little bit lost without my shortcut keys. Uh, normally, I literally just do uh, command this, command that, or I press the G button or the B or, you know, depending on, on, on what tool I need. And it is very natural. It happens very fast. 
so I was a little bit like trying to find uh, all the all the um, uh, tools. Uh, so that's one thing. Uh, having a keyboard is very useful, and it supports this. So you know, if if you have a keyboard, a wireless keyboard connected to your iPad, or the standard Apple keyboard that comes, uh, well, it doesn't come with the iPad. It costs you one hundred and seventy dollars, close to it or something, to get it. Uh, so it's a bit pricey, but if you have it, hey, great. You know, you can use that and really, really maximize productivity on this. Uh, now, the final thing is the pricing. Pricing at this moment in time is it's a subscription-based model. So you'll be paying $7.99, uh, no, $8.99 and €7.99. Euros. I'm in Europe, so I'm paying in Euros. Now, they are offering six months free trial. A six months free trial is the longest free trial I've ever heard of on the uh, App Store. It's it's something special. So it's extremely generous from um, you know from the makers of Clip Studio Paint. Smith Micro is very kind in that. Uh, so you know if you if 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 you want to try this out right now, you really have zero excuse. It costs you nothing for six months. After that. You know, see for yourself if it's what you're looking for. Is it stable? Yeah, it's pretty stable. I mean, I've done all this without the program crashing. I typed in some text. I did everything. You know, I, I moved between tools, 3D and all that stuff. It's still going. So the file is still fine. Um, you know, would I use it professionally? I can, absolutely. It is used, you know, you can, like I said, it's a copy of what you do on your desktop. So who is this good for? I would say professionals, professionals that are really either already extremely uh, passionate about what they do and they make comics all the time. If you're not making money from it, that's irrelevant at that point. Um, or professionals that actually are making money and working for publishers and stuff like that and they already use Clip Studio Paint, they want to use it on the go as well. You know, that $8.99 uh, extra a month. It's not really gonna make that much of a difference. I mean, if you're getting paid hundreds of dollars per page or something, it depends how much you your 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 fee is. Then you know you'll be fine. Um, so this really depends. For the hobbyist that is just trying to get into comics, uh, try to you know you could. And, you know, you got six months window to learn the app all you want. And the tutorials on this, actually, you don't really have to create new tutorials for this. You can just do the tutorials on, on YouTube already. There are some really good links. I'm going to link uh, this playlist uh, in this video as well so that you can have a look at that where, you know, all the YouTube, I mean, all the Clip Studio Paint tutorials that you'll probably want are there. And again, I've linked um, my own uh, Clip Studio Paint tutorials uh, on how to make a comic book page in Clip Studio Paint from beginning to end. Okay, well, that's my two cents on Clip Studio Paint for iPad Pro, iOS. Uh, you do need an Apple Pencil or, well, you don't need it, but it's highly recommended. Uh, especially if you're a pro, really, you're not going to draw with your finger. It's almost impossible. Um, and there you go. All right, well, that was it for me. I hope you liked the video. If you like these type of reviews, um, feel free to like it and, you know, subscribe. And I'll see you guys around. Thank you for stopping by. Bye-bye.